So let me switch over to our whiteboard, and we are going to talk about Roth. Whoa, what happened there? We are going to talk about Roth conversions. So I'm shifting over here. Your, this pause is a shift over to my financial 15. So let me come here. You should now see my whiteboard. Now it is time for our financial 15. And this is part two of our discussion about common Roth questions. And we're talking about Roth conversions. So you remember, I keep this all on the same whiteboard like I did last time. Last time we talked about contributions. And if you didn't see this video, and in fact, if you're just joining us for this Financial 15 on YouTube and we're talking about Roth conversions, then you're going to want to go back and potentially look at part one, um, Roth contributions, but you're certainly going to want to hit subscribe, like, and notifications so that you get the uh, you get the notifications when these videos come out. But this is going to be a three-part series. We talked about contributions. You can see we talked about all these questions. And now this week, we're going to talk about conversions. And we're going to get through as many of these common questions as possible. They just kept coming. So the first one is really, what is a Roth conversion? Well, a Roth conversion is an allowance by the IRS that allows for a distribution from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA without really any restriction. So it, they allow you to distribute funds from a traditional IRA and redeposit them into a Roth IRA. So I, I know I, I, I said no restrictions, but there are certainly consequences, right? So the consequences of that are tax and some other things that we're going to talk about. But a conversion is distributing money from a traditional IRA and re redepositing that into a Roth IRA or distributing money from a Roth retirement plan and redepositing. I did it again. Distributing money from a traditional retirement plan and redepositing that into a Roth retirement plan. Um, so that is a Roth conversion. Very simply, you're converting the money from a traditional, forever taxed, as my mentor Ed Slot likes to say, to never taxed, as he says, and I say never taxed again. Because once you pay the tax, you never pay tax again. And that is the benefit. That's your next question. So we talked about what is a Roth conversion. It's not a rollover. It's not a contribution. It's a conversion, taking that money, moving it from the traditional IRA to the Roth IRA. We're just going to stick with IRAs in this discussion. We've talked about retirement plans before. So I don't keep getting confused. So that's a Roth conversion. If we want to look at the buckets, you know, you've got tax deferred. Well, let's make them all. You've got taxable. You've got tax deferred. And now you have tax advantaged or tax free. And here today, we're talking about Roth. It's simply taking money from this tax deferred bucket and IRA, for an, as an example, and converting that now, uh, whatever dollar amount works for you, to a Roth. Now, you that dollar amount that you convert lives in the Roth IRA. Well, why would you want to do that? What's the benefit of that? Because you decide what tax rate you're going to pay during this conversion. So when you cross this bridge, think of that as a bridge. The toll is tax. And yes, you get to decide what tax rate you're going to pay. And we are we talk about that down here, so I'm going to save that discussion for there. But the benefit is, is that once you pay that tax, any distribution that comes out of here now is tax-free. There are also no RMDs from a Roth IRA. So you get to decide exactly how much you take out of that Roth IRA, whereas we talk a lot about RMDs on this uh, on this weekly webinar and all the trouble people run into RMDs and all the confusion they have with RMDs because at uh, currently at age 73, the IRS tells you exactly how much you have to take out of this tax-deferred bucket. Each, each account um, has a requirement, and you don't get to decide. It used to be a 50% penalty of what you should have taken. Now it's either 25% or 10%, depending on how fast you act. But still, there's a penalty. And, and so if you're at age 73, if the IRS says that you need to take $100,000 out of your IRA, well, you must take $100,000 out of that IRA or pay tax and pay tax. If you don't, you pay penalty. There are some things that you can do with charitable contributions, but that's we've done a video about that. But what if you only need 50? What if you only need $50,000 out of your IRA? The IRS doesn't care. They say, we don't care. We need you to take 100, and you're going to pay tax. And if you 
follow us, you certainly are probably in the mindset that taxes are going to be higher in the future than they are today. Um, and you'll be paying the, I don't know, tax rate on that dis that forced distribution. And we believe that taxes for your average middle-class American will be in the 40 to 45% effective tax rate beginning about 2030. So if you can pay tax, less tax on this bridge, on this conversion, say at a 22 or 24%, that's a 4% tax rate. That might be better for you, of course, than 40 to 45%. So as Ed says, Ed Slot says, never tax, as I say, never taxed again. You pay your tax. You choose the tax rate you're going to pay. You do that conversion. And now any distributions that come out of here are zero percent. You pay no tax as long as you meet the requirements of the five-year rule. We'll talk about that later in, a, in, uh, in our next video. Um so any distributions that come out of here are zero tax. Um, there are no RMDs, uh, no RMDs for you, no RMDs for your heirs, except for your heirs um, would have that would fall under the 10 year rule. So I really like the comment Ed made at our speaking event here in Newtown, Pennsylvania uh, in May. He said, what you're doing is you're locking in your tax rate for your life plus 10 years. There's also no tax for your heirs, right, during that time. So, or even at that distribution, that end, end of that 10 years, there's no tax. So you truly are locking in your tax rate uh, for that time. And then, any, of course, any growth um, that you have is, is tax-free. So it's not only just the, the tax rate on the amount that you're converting, but also you don't, you don't pay any tax on that growth. So if you're a million, if you have a million dollars over here, $1 million. And you, over time, probably convert it to Roth. And now your million dollars is over here. Well, that's a, certainly you've locked in that tax rate. But let's just say it grows with by another million dollars. And now you have $2 million in your Roth. Well, you don't pay tax on that either. People ask me that. You know, I should have added that. So I'll just add it verbally. People say, well, don't I pay tax on growth? I had a very well-respected attorney say that to me. Well, they're going to pay tax on the growth. No, that's not how it works. As long as you meet the requirements of the five-year rule, you won't pay tax on that growth. So it's not only locking in the tax rate that you have on the conversion amount, but then you're also saving yourself future tax on that growth. So I hope that makes sense. So that's what is the benefit of a Roth conversion. So you're converting that money from forever tax to never taxed again. Uh, and then the, um, then the growth really is never taxed. So Ed's right about that one. So the next question, can I convert my traditional IRA to a Roth IRA? Well, the, the short answer is yes, right? Anyone, anyone who has a traditional IRA or traditional 401k, I promised I wasn't going to talk about that, but I just have to, a traditional retirement plan, um, you can convert it. Now, with a retirement plan, you have to have a retirement plan to convert it in. They have to allow you to convert it. So this is why that <laughs> this is why I don't like to talk about that. Uh, that's very specific. But um, if you have a traditional IRA, you can certainly convert it to a Roth IRA. And one of the one of the things that sparked this conversation was someone said, "Well, I can't do a conversion because I make too much money." Well, there is no limit on how much money you can make to do a conversion. What this person was talking about was the phase-out levels. I'm going to go back to section one for a second. This person was talking about these phase-out levels for contributions. And this gets confused not just by individual investors, but also by professionals. I've had CPAs say this. Well, they can't do a conversion because they make too much money. That's not true. Only contributions are affected by the phase-out levels. That does not apply to conversions. You see that refers to contributions. So you can scrap that. If you make a million dollars a year or $10 million a year or $1,000 a year, you can do conversions. So can you convert a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA? As long as you have one of each, you can do it. As long as you have a traditional IRA and as long as you have a Roth IRA, you can do a conversion. And all you have to do is establish a Roth IRA. It's very, very simple to do. So then next question is, how much can I convert? How much? What's that dollar amount? 
Well, you can convert as much or as little as you'd like. In this example of the million dollars, this person could convert their entire million dollars in one year, be done with it, and never have to worry about it again. That's probably not the recommend recommendation we would make. We would probably say consider splitting that over time, those those um, conversions, so that you you um, you choose the tax rate that you're going to pay for those conversions over time. But you can, can if you wanted, if you had a billion dollars in there and you wanted to convert it all in one year, you could do that. So there are you heard, you'll hear me say there are no guardrails on this. The IRS says do as little or as much as you'd like. We just want the tax on it. We want the tax on it now because we don't see the future. The Congress only sees and the IRS only sees a very, very limited period of time. They want their tax money now. So they're not concerned about what it grows to. They're they're not they're not concerned about that. They want their tax money now. So they encourage Roth conversions by saying, do what you want. No guardrails. So can you convert uh, to a Roth? When can, I'm sorry. How much can you convert? The answer is as much or as little as you want. <laughs> 